Yeah, school sucks. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to yeah. sugarcoat it. School's like, you know, a prison. Not to be all foo co on you, but like the American school system, public school, private school, the structure is so rigid and so, I don't know, discouraging of real curiosity. And I feel like that has had a really negative effect on how we have, you know, truthful conversations as adults because so many people have been instilled with a fear of being wrong from like years and years of like being in school and being afraid to speak up in class or being like told that their idea was wrong, that like people will do anything to protect themselves from appearing wrong. When being wrong is so definitely not the worst thing that you can be online. Yeah. I oh, mean, I absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead, Emma. No, I mean, there's really, I, I just, I call a stayed sick home or stayed homesick a good amount of the time purely because like i just i had a, a big lazy streak in many ways like i wanted to be i think i i had i'm just reflecting on myself and part of this is because i was able to be this way like uh, i like felt entitled a little bit about I, I was so bad at math and science and i didn't really want to try that hard at it um and so when i'd not do well in those classes i feel bad about myself and i'd just stay home and watch tv that was kind of what it was i figured it out a little bit later but i just wanted to roll up to history and english class like be really good at it and walk out and not put as much work into it and then when i get home read all like these books i was into or go fuck around or whatever the case may be so that's just a little insight into what i used to be like i'm a lot harder of a worker now it's wild i used to be bad at math too, but as I got older, you know, past school and like practiced more math, like I found that, you know, I've been able to teach myself to be better at math through like just self-taught than I was ever really encouraged to be at school because of the rigid rigidity of the structure. And it just strikes me whenever I see people around me who just like, you know, maybe had good math teachers or maybe had a, a more higher funded school and people who don't like, there is just a widespread inability to do basic math in people that I'm like, wow, you know, our system just really kind of teaches and emphasizes that certain like you know certain ideas or certain um fields of knowledge are just you're inherently better at in a way that is you know just completely unable to be overcome by training and you know it's just okay to go through life and just continue to be bad at math because we don't really communicate math or science very well um i guess i have a strange relationship now that you bring up that one because like similar to you i got better at subjects outside of the whole schooling system. But yeah. I think for me, there was a lot of fear in school because back then they had corporal punishment. So like if I got spellings wrong, teacher would whack me with a ruler or, <laughs> oh um, or I think when you got your math wrong, they used to throw chalk at you and shit like that. So it was more of a terrifying experience. Now that I think back on it. So like, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I I, but definitely it was very rigid structure. So I, I don't know. I think we're doing schooling very wrong. I mean, I guess it's the second time I'm talking about schooling. But um, video game wise, I think, yeah, I definitely, I can also see why people like the escape of that too. Because something with, whether it be listening to books or playing a game, your brain is kind of turned off. So you're not actually having to, I shouldn't say it turned off, but it's not processing whatever crap you're dealing with. You're kind of more focused on the topic, whether it is um, torturing your sins or building a city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's the great thing about it. I think, like, especially like comedy podcasts, is it, no matter what sort of you're depressed or mourning about, you, if you listen to one, you can kind of forget and your brain is chasing jokes and stuff like that for at least, you know, 60 minutes. Right. And um, I. And I, I guess why we're seeing a prevalence of it even now, like during the whole COVID time, I'm, pre I'm beginning to wonder what would happen if we lived in a world that didn't have a type of social me media or, no, I shouldn't say social, but if we didn't have the internet as we have it now, and like all we had was at best maybe TV or some books, would people literally be losing their shit as they are now? Right. I mean, I think that the, you know, advent of social media, especially like the way in which it sort of democratizes political speech, it allows people mm -hmm. to build their own platforms, you know, semi-organically has done a lot to, if not change, uh, you know, the outcome of political events, certainly to create a more realistic archive of what was going on.
and like the, the fact that people were actually like opposing things or like speaking out against like these dominant narratives in the media that otherwise would go uncontested. So I think that, you know, it's hard to map where we would be like numbers wise, let's say for COVID, but I think certainly we would see way more uh, or rather way less uh, narratives challenging the dominant narrative of the week going on at MSNBC or Fox News or whatever. It would be a much more controlled situation. Maybe we would have much less understanding of how many people are dead. You know, who knows, right? Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.